Lord, my allotted, allotted, allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. For me, the measuring lines have fallen on unpleasant sight. Fair to me indeed is my inheritance. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today, as we come before our Father in heaven, let us call to mind the times that we have failed and ask God for his divine mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who called the Bishop St. John Newman, renowned for his charity and pastoral service to shepherd your people in America, grants by his intercession that as we foster the Christian education of youth and are strengthened by the witness of brotherly love, we may constantly increase the family of your church through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for, for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and carrying out. This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, let my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, in such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, With evil intent he brought them out, that he may kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you sworn to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. As fathers made a calf of Horeb and adored a molten image, they exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember 
us, O Lord, as you remember your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, and Moses, his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O Lord, as you remember your people. Alleluia, alleluia. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus went around to all of the towns and the villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today is St. John Newman's memorial. And he is the first Catholic bishop of the United States ever proclaimed a blessed and then a saint. He is one that was rooted in education, especially of the young. Most of our college communities are named after him. Thus comes the word, the Newman Center. I had the honor of serving in the Milwaukee Diocese at the Newman Center at UWM, and it was one of the greatest assignments of my life in a sense of the relationships that were made with the young people there. A great gift of vocations was set upon that Newman Center where seven men and women went on to vocation to either priesthood or religious life. And I'm thankful for that, but the other relationships of marriage and and other things that came about, it continues to be a teaching relationship for a lot of the students that were there with me. And I am grateful for that as well. My brothers and sisters in Christ, John Newman is the model for all bishops. He's the model to, as pastoral care to his flock. He devoted his life and poured his life into his work. And that's what made him such a great churchman and a great bishop. I think that he becomes a great intercessor for all the bishops out there. And I think we as lay faithful need to pray uh, to John Newman for our shepherds, especially during this time of crisis. There is a couple things lacking that I see in the church. The lack of discernment of what's going on in the signs of the times. There are some that are speaking about this and others remain silent as a churchman and I struggle with that. And secondly, you know, that intercession of John Newman as a great saint within the Catholic Church in America is something that should be modeled for us. His life should be studied in a sense, for our leadership and for our shepherds. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue to go through this quote-unquote pandemic, we struggle, and there's much addiction out there. 
There's a lot of death going on from addiction, from suicide, from mental illness. Um, and the thing is, is we need to pray more specifically for those that are struggling mentally, spiritually, and physically in this time. Being cooped up and locked up in a way uh, that we have been for the last 10 months is a struggle for everybody. But we have to realize that the Lord does have a plan. And we need to see the signs of the times which are going on right now in our world. Through this, we become stronger. Our faith, faith becomes tested. And like the Israelites that came out of Egypt, they saw the beautiful workings of God saving them. He still is our God. He still is our master. He is the healer of our hearts, of our infirmities. He is the freedom when we are imprisoned. He is our God. And in that, we must have faith in him. This time can lead us one of two ways, it's like we are standing on a razor's edge. We can move into our addictions and our struggles and our worldly sense of who we are, and we can go down that rabbit hole, struggling deeper and deeper into sin. Or we can look at Christmas and the epiphany and we can see the repentance that John the Baptist brought, the promise of salvation that the Father has sent us through Jesus Christ. So we repent, we ask for forgiveness, we receive God's mercy. And in that, we start a new way, a new way in peace and love and following the Lord's voice in our mind and our heart. And if we do this, God promises us salvation. He promises us that love, that joy, and that peace, especially in the world to come. So my brothers and sisters, as we suffer anyway, it's a great mystery to offer our sufferings up to God during this time, our struggles, our mental, our physical, our spiritual, our emotional suffering. We offer it for the salvation of souls, especially those who are dying. We pray that divine mercy for them, that God's love would champion all things, all emotions, all of our mind and fill our heart. And we pray that John Newman would intercede for the church to give us a holy boldness amongst the clergy in our country and in the world. Father, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for hearing us, for we know you always hear us. Consider these needs and we beg you to answer them. Father, we continue to pray for our church. We pray for that spirit of holy boldness that John Newman had. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in our world, within our church, within our families, and within our own hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for those who come to us in crisis, our military, law enforcement, firefighters, first responders, hospital personnel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick members of our parish, of our community, of our state, our country. We ask, Lord, that your healing presence come upon them, especially those who open their hearts to you, Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for you, for your family, your friends, your circle of influence, for those that have asked for your prayers, and especially now the prayers in the silence of your hearts. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for David Pilon, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, these are our prayers. We ask you to hear them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and also through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, our Mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, and through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to see us and be pleased in the sacrifice of humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sins. Let us stand and pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Merciful Father, look upon the gifts we have placed on your altar and grant that we may reflect the image of Christ your Son, just as you granted to St. John Newman to imitate what he celebrated through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands and endured his passion so to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ that we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Anthony, St. John Newman, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof, and only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who has given up home, brothers or sisters, father or mother, wife or children or property for my sake, will receive many times as much and inherit everlasting life. Please allow me to lead you at home in a spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, you are present in every tabernacle in the world. We ask you, Lord, and we invite you to flood into our hearts with your love, your peace, your joy, your mercy, forgiveness. We ask for your mercy, Lord. We ask for mercy for our sinfulness. And we ask you, Lord, to bring healing into our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. <clears throat> Refreshed.
by our participation in the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, we ask, O oh Lord, that by the example of St. John Newman, we may experience the power of the sacrament and remain constantly in the church of the bond of unity and truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.